In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of PETA 4, which is the fourth version of the Pan-European Thermal Atlas that we've developed in the Heat Roadmap Europe studies. To begin, I just want to give you a quick intro to the data that we're going to show on the map, which is only active when you zoom in slightly on the uh, Heat Atlas, which you can see when the text goes black in the legend on the left-hand side. And the three layers that we have on the map right now are excess heat facilities, city areas, and the heat demand density. So if we start by looking at the heat demand density, this is a 100 by 100 meter resolution uh, display of the heat demand across uh, Europe. And when you zoom into a particular city like London here, for example, you can see that the heat demand on a 100 by 100 meter resolution is highest in the city center, as we would expect, because that's where the urban, the, the population density is highest. And that's illustrated by the, the pink areas. And it gets lower as we move out of the city city centre and towards the suburban areas, illustrated here by the red and then orange uh, areas displayed in the map. And the reason this is important is because this reflects where the heat demand is high enough to justify the development of district heating networks. In Denmark today, anywhere that has a heat demand density of 120 terajoules per kilometre squared or higher would be considered highly feasible for the implementation of district heating. Areas even lower than that are often met with district heating already today, but 120 would be a very, very likely candidate for implementing a district heating network. So you can look at this map, zoom into some different cities like London, maybe go to Birmingham, other cities across Europe, you can see that the heat atlas covers 90% of the heat demand in Europe across 14 countries. So there's a lot of different cities you can check out. In this video, I'm going to focus on one that we often use in some of our presentations, which is the city of Middlesbrough. And the reason I like this example is because it has not only a, a heat density that's sufficient for the development of district heating, but it also has some excess heat facilities located very nearby. So if I turn on the data layer that's described as excess heat facilities, I click the arrow to show the legend, you can see that what this layer uh, presents is different types of excess heat facilities, as well as the amount of excess heat that could be recovered. And I should emphasize that this is the maximum amount of excess heat that could be recovered from these facilities based on um, other uh, plants that are doing this today as well. And the size of the circle represents the amount, the color represents the type of plant. So we can see in Middlesbrough we have industries represented by blue, power plants by black, and a waste incinerator by green. And from looking at this map, I can see that this industry, due to the size of the circle, is the largest excess heat facility nearby. So if I click on that, I can see that there's 18 petajoules of excess heat that could, in theory, be recovered from that facility each year. There's also some excess heat, uh, four petajoules from a power plant, and there's excess heat of about almost two petajoules from a waste incinerator. As as well as a number of other smaller industrial facilities. So that means if I add up all of these together, I know uh, from uh, advance of this presentation that the total excess heat in the Middlesbrough area is about 35 petajoules per year. And I can see from the heat density map that there is ideal locations to start developing district heating in the city, because here I can see from the, the dark red slash orange areas that these are much higher heat demands than would typically be required to develop district heating in a city. What I can do then is I can turn off these two layers and turn on our urban uh, layer, which is basically an aggregation of our data within a city area. So if I click on this Middlesbrough city, you can see I get a range of information then about the city that pops up once I select that urban area of Middlesbrough. I know that the number of district heating systems currently there is one, but it's probably very small because they're not usually not that big in the UK. The, the size of the city is 15,000 hectares, hectares and the population is 350,000 people. And over time, we plan to, add, plan to add more and more information here. For example, one of the attributes we're planning to add in the very short term is the total heat demand within that city. And I know from our own database that right now the heat demand in Middlesbrough is approximately 10 petajoules per year. So when this information is displayed here, you can then compare the heat demand in the city to the amount of excess heat located nearby. So for example, if I know the heat demand in Middlesbrough is 10 petajoules per year, and I know the amount of excess heat from these 
facilities nearby is 35 petajoules per year, then I know I can replace all of the natural gas in Millsburg with excess heat that is currently being wasted. If I turn on my heat demand density map, I can then use my measurement tool to see how I could get started with this. So for example, I know that this plant has the highest amount of excess heat. I know that the city center is the most attractive place to start developing district heating because it has the high heat densities. And then I can measure the distance from one to the other, which I can see here is about five kilometers and in district heating terms that is very very reasonable the largest chp plant in copenhagen is around 12 kilometers from the city center so this is very manageable with existing uh, technologies i can also tell that if i look at the entire city maybe looking more to the medium term from the city center of middlesbrough i can measure that uh, let's turn on kilometers here i can measure that uh, from the city center of Middlesbrough to an area of approximately, let's say, 8, 9, 10 kilometers, we can get access to about three times more excess heat than we need to heat the city in total. If I want to go the other direction, I could say from the furthest facility all the way to the furthest edge of the city is about that 12 kilometers I mentioned earlier, which is very short in the context of district heating transmission uh, pipes. So using the PETA tool, I can make some strategies about how to get started in the short term by connecting some very high excess heat facilities so to some very high heat demand areas, make a medium term strategy in terms of what other options could I bring on board in terms of other excess heat facilities nearby, as well as other areas of the city I could potentially connect. But you can also make very long term strategies by looking at neighboring cities that you could also connect up with in the long term. So for example, we can see that outside Middlesbrough, there's a lot of heat demand in Hartlepool. There's also a huge heat demand up here in Newcastle. And if we take some existing examples, like if I move to Sweden, for example, which is a country that has a lot of district heating today and has developed district heating over the last 40 or 50 years, I know from experience that the city of Helsingborg started off as an independent district heating network, so did the city of Landskrona, and so did the city of Lund in the south. However, these are all connected today as they have developed over time. And the distance from these cities all the way from north to south is approximately 50 kilometers. So if we use that as a guideline, um, then we could look to the Middlesbrough example and develop a more long-term uh, strategy for the, uh, for the um, district heating network. So again, taking the city of Middlesbrough as a starting point, the long-term strategy could be to come through Hartlepool up to the city of Newcastle, and you can see that is a distance of approximately 50 kilometers also. So based on existing experiences in Sweden, you could say that a long-term strategy for this area could be to take advantage of the enormous amounts of excess heat available in Middlesbrough to not just supply the Middlesbrough area, but to connect via Hartlepool up to this very large heat demand in Newcastle. And I had a look at the database before making this presentation, and, and I can tell you that the heat demand in Newcastle is about 30 petajoules, and the heat demand in Middlesbrough is about 10 petajoules, whereas the excess heat in Middlesbrough is about over 30 petajoules, and there's also some excess heat available in north of Newcastle also. So planning this area as a region means that all of the excess heat between Millsborough and Newcastle would be more than sufficient to, supply, to replace all of the gas currently used in the area of Newcastle, Hartlepool. And Middlesbrough. So there's some long-term strategies you can also use make with the PETA tool. Have a look at your own area. You might find some very interesting um, opportunities to use excess heat, some really high heat demand areas that you could connect these excess heat facilities to. For example, I had a look at uh, the Ruhr area here in Germany, and I managed to find some power stations here that are currently have an excess heat potential of 180 petajoules from this power station and 150 petajoules joules from this power station. And to put that in context, that excess heat is worth approximately a billion euro each year. So there's huge opportunities to build large piping infrastructure to utilize 
those excess heat opportunities. There's a lot of countries covered in Heat Roadmap Europe, 14 in total, which accounts for 90% of the heat demand in Europe. So there's a lot of opportunities lying around in the PETA tool, which I hope you can find for your own area. And let's start, uh, let's start replacing our natural gas with this excess heat opportunity. If you want to access the map, go to our website, heatroadmap.eu. If you land on the homepage, then you can click on our shortcut to the thermal maps at the beginning, or else you can go to the useful resources and maps, and we'll have some links here to get you to the PETA4 tool. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, please check it out on heatroadmap.eu, or else follow our activities by signing up to our newsletter, which is under the news page, or else go to our Twitter profile, which is at Heat Roadmap EU. Uh, thanks for listening.